Hey, welcome back to the scale model experiment. This week, I'm going to do a white glue review of the 1968 Dodge Coronet convertible by MPC round to AMT. So stay tuned and watch me build this thing up. Okay, starting with the instructions, we have a drag version, a stock version, and a trailer. Kind of cool. So first step is to build the engine. We got uh, injector stacks or stock engine. Next step is assemble stock wheels or the drag wheels. Chassis looks pretty si pretty simple there. We have exhaust engine, put the wheels on, interior, sandwich it all together, put some final touches on it, and assemble the trailer, and put some decals on it. All right, let's get started. All right, so first thing up, we'll talk about the body. Nicely cast. Do you like this? The Dodge letters and the uh, individual lines, the RT there. Nice peak here. Feeling along here, I, I feel a mold line. Needs to be sanded off. Same all the way to here. And yeah, just a tiny one right here. Um, there are locator pins for the inner fender wells. So I think that that'll fit real tight. Let's take this apart. Right. So we have locator pins in the back here, here, yeah, so everything's going to line up real good. Uh, our interior tub here, I, I've already cut a few pieces just to test fit. But um, yeah, nice locator pins for the interior tub here. We have uh, gas and brakes for an automatic. Chassis, uh, along just like the, the Demon kit, it's a little simplified. We have our torsion bars molded in, K-frame molded in. Not bad. Um, not a fan of the molded in wiring, but I'll, uh, I'll deal with that. And whatever, yeah. And so here's some mounting pins for like the battery and uh, whatnot. But I do like all of the mounting pins. That's positive mounting for everything. I like that. Same here. Okay, first tree. We have a couple of hoods. We have the stock hood and the drag hood. Uh, really silly looking uh, drag hood scoop thingy. Top of, top of our radiator. Interesting. Exhaust. There's our radiator wall, rear end differential, battery, wiper bottle, horn. It looks like uh, drag traction bars. That's what those are called. Okay. Next tree, we have the firewall. It's got a molded in brake booster. And these look like um, probably the axle pieces. Next up, we have some exhaust. And some locating pins. Look at, there's a distributor there. 
I don't think you could drill that out if you wanted to. Uh, drive shaft loop. I cut this off the uh, the trees. It's the convertible boot. This tree, we have our seats. The uh, stock seats have seat belts molded to them. I do like the uh, the buttons on them. That's nice. And some drag custom seats, seat backs to go on here. That's nice. Wheel backs for axle pins. Steering wheel. This looks like part of a roll bar in our stock dash. Yeah, there's another roll bar here too. Next up, engine pieces. Like our heads, air cleaner. I think that's a carburetor. Yeah, it's probably a carburetor. Maybe that's an alternator. Kind of looks like it. Valve covers. Yeah. And lastly, I had already cut that out, remember? The door panels are really nice. Nice deep engraving. Let's see, sort of a 3D view to it for the arm armrests and whatnot. And the back seat has the seat belts molded to it as well. So our tires are black walls on one side and white walls on the other side. Here's the drag racing front tires, a little, a little skinnier than the stock tires. So there's two of those. Here's the other two white walls. And we have some drag tires with no pad printing, like uh, the Demon had pad printing on them. But they're not bad. And actually, is that? No, it's just a seam. I thought that might be like uh, street drag radials. And we have a metal axle. Clear parts, I'm not gonna take them out of the bag yet. But we have our windshield. This looks like drag scoop, so you can see through the middle of it. That's kind of neat. Some headlights, and I'm not sure what those are for. Have to look. Uh, we have a set of clear ones, and we have some red ones. Tail lights, very nice. Parts for the trailer. the two walls this piece is coming off. Looks like a floor jack, kind of neat. Trailer frame, the leaf springs. Oh, this is part of that floor jack. Looks like a gas can, and a toolbox, and an axle. Kind of cool. These look like the uh, parts to go with the trailer. We have some towing mirrors, a four-way, what else is on here? I don't know. I don't know. And lastly, the chrome tree. Trees. So we have a custom front grill, center console, and the stock front grill. I do like the original issue had molded in headlights, but these are Headlight buckets to so put uh, clear lenses in. We got some uh, five star mags there. We have the stock hubcaps, stock wheels, front and rear bumpers. That must be, yeah, the injection stack intake manifold. We have a uh, automatic shifter, some mirrors, stock mirrors, some drag chrome headers and these are the injection stacks and it looks like they give you some extras this is the decal sheet we have the bumblebee stripes in three colors and super bee which uh, you'd have to do a little modification to the rear end to make it a super bee but what you do is you put this across the top of the back and then use this much of the side stripes. You know, basically put them upside down. Uh, we got Dodge RT. We got some nice license plates there. Some drag parts. This is for the trailer. 
These are kind of neat. The Dodge Scat Pack. Yeah, run with the Dodge Scat Pack. The cars with the bumblebee stripes. Yeah. Now I'm gonna trim all the parts off the tree and I will come back to you when all the parts are off the trees and we will start assembling the model in white glue. So here's all the parts clipped off the trees. I sort of separated them into interior pieces, chassis pieces, trailer pieces, and engine pieces. So now that I've got it all clipped off the trees, I'll start assembling everything. Just for fun, we'll start with the trailer. I'll be using Elmer's Glue All Extra Strong Formula. This bottle is very old. It's about half full, a little less than half full now. So uh, I think I need to get another bottle. But this, like I said, it's old. And so the squeeze thing doesn't work anymore because it's just too thick. So you can use any white glue, but I don't recommend using like a canopy glue because it just holds the parts too too well. This is going to hold my pieces together just well enough to uh, pre-assemble. See how thick that is? So we'll just get started and, and you don't need much. Start with the trailer. There's little locator pins here and here. It says not to glue this, so we'll just slide it in there. We'll just kind of rest them in place. a big pin and a little pin so it can only go one way. Yeah, it's a secure fit. Chrome jack stands. I don't know who would ever use a chrome jack stand but hey. The wheels it says it says to use either use number 12 which they only they only had remember the white walls and the front wheels for the drag tires. So I'm gonna use the front wheels for the drag tires for the trailer. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with two tires short if you're gonna build a stock car or if you're gonna build a drag car, which why would you pull a trailer with a drag car? So I'm gonna use these. And on the chrome tree, there's only four of the hubcaps and four of the mag wheels. So I guess we're gonna use mag wheels on the trailer. So be it. So there's a retainer. See the, see the oblong square there? It's going to mount to the oblong square there. So hopefully I can get this on without destroying the whole thing. Yeah, but that does need some glue.
Let's put them on here. We'll let that glue dry for a little bit. Continuing on, we'll put the tail lights in here. All right, now that the trailer's finished, we'll load it up. And just for fun, let's put the drag slicks back there too. All right, now we're ready to go racing. Next up, we'll tackle the engine. Okay, so here's my criticisms of the engine. The bottom oil pan is either on one side or it's on the other. So it's uh, crooked. Something's going on with the fit there. Um, the starter motor is molded to the, to the block. I'm not crazy about that. Wish it was a separate piece. The air cleaner, air cleaner sits way too low. Let's see. It's like there's no carburetor there, which we don't really want to see that carburetor anyways. It's horrible. The uh, breathers are on both sides of, are on the same side, which in the instructions, it says to put them on the other side. See, the breather is here and the breather is here, but these valve covers are keyed to the heads. So you can't do it like this. I tried, you know, flipping it either side. And so I suggest cutting the mounting holes or the mounting pegs off of one of these and put the other one, you know, turn it around, put it over here. Um, this intake manifold, it's kind of weird. It's, it's like a polygon or something. Um, it leaves a gap right here and then it's like laying over the edge here. So I would swap that for a different, um, different one. Actually, I would just swap this whole engine out for a 383 out of the uh, 6968 Dart. But it is what it is. Let's move on. Next up, we'll tackle the interior. criticisms of the interior. 
told you before, I'm not a fan of the seat belts molded in, but it is what it is. Shifter looks a little tall for an automatic shifter. It should be about half that size. So I think when you build it, um, cut it off right there. Stick it weight a little farther down. Um, I do like that the steering wheel is centered on the seat. That's one of my pet peeves. And that you can get your legs underneath the steering wheel. Good job. Um, otherwise, good fit, good positive uh, placement of all the parts. Yeah, it's good. Next step, we're gonna attack the chassis here. First things first is there's some holes that need to open up in here. Oh yeah, that's a tight fit. That's not coming out of there. And then we'll stick the pin through the back. I'm gonna go ahead and press these wheel backs onto here and let it all just kind of cure together. And then down. And then you can pop all these into place. Here. Let's go ahead and assemble these tires. We're just going to snap it right into place. And then the back end, we'll do one side and then the other. This body over. I didn't test fit that. I wonder if. Okay. Come on now. There we go. Yeah, that's a good fit. All right, so it's time for my final thoughts. It looks like a 68 Dodge Coronet. The wheel lips really good. I like the door handles. The uh, lock cylinder is a little faint, but hey, RT looks good. I'd probably sand that off and use a decal instead. You got the marker lights in the correct places. I do have the turn signal indicators up here on the top. As I pointed out earlier, this gap here, where the interior tub meets the body, that bothers me a little bit. I'm gonna have to move that out, something to pay attention to. And also, right deep in there, you can see the mounting tab hole for the interior. So maybe some flocking will, hold, will hide all of that, but um, the interior looks good other than this, this gap here. Back end of this car looks really good. This tail light lenses look really good. I'm a fan of all this engraving back here. I think with one big piece of bare metal foil before you paint, and then you can wipe off just these little pieces of chrome, as well as the Dodge letters. Front grille looks really, really good with the separate headlight lenses. I like that. RT looks good. I think with uh, painted all black and then just uh, wipe the letters off. And I believe that R and T are red. Again, when I built the engine, I commented that I think that the air cleaner sits too low and it's uh, it just doesn't look right to me. Otherwise, the engine's a little small in the engine bay. Um, just looks, yeah. Yeah, maybe a different engine in here would be better. Um, maybe just a whole swap with the 68 Roadrunner kit to give you a better inner fender wells, engine, 
Um, yeah, yeah, I think with a swap with a 68 Roadrunner kit, this would be better, a better fit for this. The trailer, the trailer's kind of fun. Um, I didn't mount that, uh, I didn't mount the frame for it, so uh, it'll just kind of be a standalone thing. I think it's kind of fun that the uh, tail leg gate goes down and whatnot. This was a fun little build here. I think that I would replace those wheels with some steel wheels or something, something a little more utilitarian than mags uh, or, you know, the Dodge hubcaps. I'm happy that this kit is back out. Um, I could have never afforded an original 68 Dodge Coronet convertible. I like convertibles. I like Mopars, so this is really kind of right up my alley. Thank you for watching my white glue review of the 1968 Dodge Coronet. I think this is a great kit. I'm, um, I'm really looking forward to taking this back apart and uh, painting the parts up. I'm a big Mopar fan, and I especially like convertibles. So, yeah, this is worth buying. I know that the hardtop is coming out soon, but uh, I think I'm a convertible fan, so uh, this is really the one that I wanted. I built the Model House 68 Cornet hardtop years and years and years ago, um, but this, this is what I really wanted. So thank you, AMT, for putting this back out, and um, we'll see you in the next White Glue Review. Bye. You still here? Go ahead and watch the next video. Hit the subscribe button.